In the last couple of chapters, we looked at a lot of different formulas for finding the derivative, um, depending on you know the type of function and what rules we're using, that kind of thing. What we are looking at now in unit four is we're starting to look at applications and um, what the derivative means in the context of a problem. So the first section here is about interpreting the meaning of the derivative. And you will need a graphing calculator for this, so grab one if you don't have one. Okay, um, so for our, this first example that we're looking at, and then we'll, we'll talk about the specific parts, but for the first example, we have a table of values where it says temperature in degrees Celsius of the water in a pond is a differentiable function, so derivative exists, W of time T. So W of T is the temperature at a specific time T for this pond. Okay. And it says the table shows the water temperature recorded every three days over 15 day period. Okay. So it says use the data from the table to find an approximation for W prime of 12. So W prime means we're finding the derivative of W at T equals 12. Okay. And we're looking for an instantaneous rate of change. Well, we don't have an equation for W, but we are approximating. Okay. We've been doing this with tables before. We are going to find the average rate of change over a small interval and that will represent or approximate the instantaneous rate of change at a point that is on that interval. So if I'm looking for W prime of 12, then I'm looking in this region right here, okay? And I can pick two points and really I could go from nine to 12 or 12 to 15 or nine to 15. Um, either, any of those are going to be fine but I'm going to, um, I'm going to approximate, I'm going to find the average rate of change, meaning the slope of the secant, to approximate the instantaneous rate of change, meaning the derivative or the slope of the tangent. So I'm going to go from 9 to 15 and just keep 12 in the middle of that interval, okay? So I'm going to write, full statement here, W prime of 12 is approximately equal to, and then I'm going to do the average rate of change from 9 to 15. So um, now, I can write this a couple of different ways, so let me show you both of them. So I can write W of 15 minus W of 9 over 15 minus 9, okay? And then I can plug in the values there, so it's going to be 21 minus 24 over 15 minus 9 is 6, so that's negative 3 over 6, which is negative 1 half. Okay, so here's my numeric answer. All right. Now, if I look over here in this little box at the scoring guidelines, so this tells us um, what this problem was worth. So this part of the problem was worth two points. Uh, fun fact, this 2001 AP test is the AP test that I took in high school. OK, so I actually have no idea if I answered this question right. Um, it's been a little too long. OK, so I have negative one half as my value. But here, this problem is worth two points. The first point is for the difference quotient. OK, meaning whether or not I subtracted and evaluated correctly, my first point comes from either having this or from having this. OK, so if I write down one of those two things, I get the first of the two points. OK, and then my second point comes from evaluating that and then giving an answer with the unit. If there's units in the problem, I have to have units in my answer. So this is negative one half. And then let's look at what we're changing. So W is a measure of. Um, temperature in degrees Celsius, so change in, in temperature over T is a measure of days. So this is going to be degrees Celsius per day. Okay. All right. So that would give me my second point. Now, if I want to give this as a statement, in other words, if I want to interpret it, I really need to have a couple of pieces. So let's come back to that after we look at um, look at this, because that'll be our, uh, part B down here. Okay, so here is um, a handy dandy acronym to help you remember to have all of the parts of your interpretation statement. Um, and it is NUT, which is a bit comical, but also convenient because I don't know if you recognize this, but this is the College Board Acorn, okay, which is a NUT. Okay, so here, this is to help us remember to have all of the pieces when we interpret a derivative statement, okay? So the first, the N means that we need to have a, a noun and the number that goes with that, okay? So in other words, the subject of the problem and numerical value. In this case, it's going to be the change in the, um, it's going to be the change in the temperature, okay? Um, we'll come back to that in a second. And then the U is the units. We have to have correct units. 
And um, usually if you're interpreting a derivative, it is a rate. So you should have a rate unit as well. And then T the time means the specific instance where we found our derivative or where we are approximating our derivative. Okay. So if I want to interpret, whoops, if I want to interpret what we just found in part A, okay, negative one half as um, a full statement here, um, remember the W is the, is the temperature and T is the time. So I can say that um, on day 12, so this would be my, my time, okay, and really the order of the, of the sentence doesn't matter here. You can put that at the end if you want. Um, on day 12, the water temp was changing or, so here's the deal, I can say changing to indicate that, um, that there's a rate happening or I can say increasing or decreasing. If I say increasing or decreasing, I need to make sure the sign um, of, my, of my answer, which in this case is negative, um, makes sense in an English, in an English uh, context here. So I'm going to say the water temperature was decreasing uh, by one half of a degree Celsius per day. Okay, so I've got my correct unit in here, the degree Celsius per day. My noun is that the water temp is decreasing by a half and my time is day 12. Now, if I said decreasing by negative one half degree Celsius per day, that would be incorrect because if you're decreasing by negative amount, that is increasing. Okay, um, also, sorry if you're hearing whining, that's my dog, zero stop. And... Um, I could also say it's changing by negative one half and that would be fine. Well, here we have on a certain workday, the rate, which is G of T in tons per hour. So this is already a rate function, okay? At which unprocessed gravel arrives at a gravel processing plant is modeled by this. T is measured in hours and uh, it's over the time zero to eight. At the beginning of the workday, which is T equals zero, the plant has 500 tons of unprocessed gravel. So this is an initial amount. Um, may or may not be important, probably not for this part. During the hours of operation, the plant processed gravel at a constant rate of 100 tons. So that's the rate that the gravel is being processed, but we are looking at the G function, which is the rate that the gravel is coming into the, fun or into the plant, okay? So we're looking for G prime of five. So G prime of five um, is going to be a rate of change of a rate, okay? So keep, keep that in mind, and we're gonna pay attention to units to make sure our answer units are correct. Um, and so we want to find the derivative of G at five. So, okay, so I've got this function into uh, my Y1, and then I'm looking for the derivative at time five. So remember that's math eight, and I put my function in in terms of X, so derivative with respect to X. Alpha trace is my shortcut. If you are using an 83, remember you're still doing math eight, which is the numeric derivative, and you're gonna do the function. So y1, comma, and then at the variable or with respect to x, and then comma, and then your point. So um, let me know if you have questions on how to enter it on an 83. But on an 84, this is what it looks like. And we're doing the derivative at time five. So we enter, we get negative 24. And remember AP, we always go to three decimal places unless otherwise specified. So negative 24.588. Okay, so G, full statement. G prime of five is approximately equal to negative 24.588. And so now let's think about our unit. So this is a rate of change of G and G is in tons per hour. So this is tons per hour. It's a rate of change of G over some amount of time. So over hours, ooh, that's, that's terrible R. Uh, over hours again. So it's tons per hour per hour, or we could say, or we could say tons per hour squared. Both of those are fine, um, but it's not tons per hour because that would just be a change in G, but we're doing a change in G over time, specifically at time five. Okay, so there's our correct units and our value. So we are going to say that um, at five hours after the plant opens. And again, your wording can be different as long as you have the noun and the number 
the u- correct unit and the time at which it's occurring. So at five hours after the plant opens, um, the rate that gravel is arriving is, and again, this is negative, so I'm going to say decreasing by 24.588 tons per square hour. Okay. Um, and I do have a rate of change of rate. So I, I'm saying that the rate is decreasing. So that's a rate of change of rate, which is what we have. Okay. Um, and then for this last one here, we have wind chill in temperature, uh, which is degrees Fahrenheit that a human feel. Okay. Let me read that again. The wind chill is the temperature in degrees Fahrenheit that a human feels based on the air temperature, also in degrees Fahrenheit, and the wind velocity, which is V, okay, velocity is V, in miles per hour. So air, if the air temp is 32 degrees Fahrenheit, then wind chill is given by this function and is valid over 5 to 60 miles per hour. Okay, so we're looking for W prime of 20. W represents the wind chill function, so we're doing a rate of change of the wind chill at specifically V equals 20. And that's not a time here, that's a V velocity, okay? So back to calculator. All right, I've got that function into Y2 this time. So from the home screen, I'm gonna do math eight, derivative with respect to X of alpha trace, go down to Y2, and then at the point where X is equal to 20. So negative 0.286, okay, so W prime of 20 is approximately negative 0.286. Okay, so what does this mean in the context of the problem? So this is going to be, so when V is equal to 20, so when the wind velocity that's my t time, but it's not really a time this time. Uh, when the wind velocity is 20 miles per hour, the, whoops, the wind chill is, now we could say changing, decreasing. Again, I'm gonna go with decreasing because it's negative. So I'm gonna say is decreasing by, 0.286, and then my units are wind chill, let's see, wind chill is temperature in degrees Fahrenheit, so degrees Fahrenheit, and this is per velocity unit, which is miles per hour, so degrees Fahrenheit per mile per hour, which seems like a weird unit, but it's the appropriate unit for this problem. Okay, so just remember those things. Make sure you have the noun and the number for your derivative statement, and then the correct unit, which is going to be a rate statement, and the um, instant at which that derivative is happening or occurring.